Now we'll be hearing more about the role insects play in Africa and how they are beneficial to humans and nature as a whole. Dr. Sunday Kessie is an entomologist and pest management specialist at the International Center of Insect Physiology and Ecology. He has done a lot of fascinating research into biorepellent bugs as a reliable food source and how insects are excellent bioindicators of climate change. Equal Africa caught up with him in Nairobi. One of the critical roles that they play in the ecosystem is pollination. Uh, about 85% of our crops are uh, pollinated by various kinds of insects. And without pollination, uh, food security is in danger. So insect is very, very important uh, in, within that context. For instance, the economic value of pollination by insects or animals in general uh, could be as high as $577 billion globally. This is huge. We fight by the insect with diseases because insects are also attacked by diseases. Uh, could be fungus, could be bacteria, could be protozoans. They all suffer from this kind of diseases. And what we do is to exploit these diseases of insects and use it to control the insect instead of relying on pesticides. And what we have been doing over the years, ECP has commercialized various products on the basis of this understanding. We are able to isolate or carry out bioprospecting or exploration to find dead insects. And we isolate these pathogens or these bacteria, fungus, from the insects, culture it and mass produce it. And once we have done that, we transfer this knowledge to a private sector that provide that produce this biopesticide as alternative to the use of synthetic pesticide that is harmful to the environment. The utilization of insects for food and feed has really taken Africa by storm because uh, Initially, the knowledge was little known, but immediately we went into this program and began to let people know of the value of insects in terms of consumption and for feed. We discovered that there are over 500 different kinds of insects that are eaten across Africa. So we began to work with the policymakers to ensure that standards are developed. And as we speak now, we have the first standard for feed and for food in Kenya and in uh, Uganda. So we need to see more of this across Africa. And the Kenyan example has opened the door for several other African countries to begin to embrace the need to have standards to ensure that these products are available all across the place. Climate change uh, is so important for insects because it affects their development, it affects their reproduction, and it affects their survival. As the temperature warms, they develop quicker. And when they develop quicker, there is a tendency that certain insects will emerge very quick and attack the crop at an early stage where you don't even expect them to come. And we are seeing this happening. The other aspect is changes in distribution. Because the temperature is warming, there is the tendency for the insects to begin to move from two warm areas to to cooler areas. So changes in distributional patterns or contraction can happen. Climate change has all kinds of impact on insects and insects are really good indicators for monitoring this. In addition to pollinating fruits and flowers and vegetables, insects give us many other things we would probably not want to do without. Honey, beeswax, silk, and these are just a few examples. As we heard from Dr. Ekesi, there are many predatory or parasitic insects 
that prey on plants or animals so they can play an important role in pest control. Gardeners love ladybugs because they devour aphids. Peta Katz and his staff breed the colorful beetles and send their eggs to mainly private customers. His company has been in the business for over 20 years. Not all their beneficial bugs are suitable for use outdoors, though. If you capture grown ladybugs and want to use them somewhere, there's always the possibility that they will fly away. So if you deploy ladybugs, then only in enclosed spaces. Minute predatory mites, on the other hand, tend to stay put. Here they've made themselves comfortably at home on some bean plants. The staff then harvest them along with the leaves they're attached to. The predatory mites have already decimated an entire colony of spider mites here and bred prolifically in the process. Just a few leaves are enough to provide a customer with more than a thousand of the useful predators. Natural pest control works particularly well if you use beneficial insects at the first signs of infestation. You have to look at it mathematically. If you have a hundred million pests, you need a hundred thousand beneficial insects to fight them. That's an enormous number. If you only have a thousand pests, you only need 20 beneficial insects. So you have to identify the infestation at an early stage and deploy beneficial insects straight away. The tiny parasitoid wasp, Encasia formosa, is also bred by Katz Biotech. Here on these tobacco plants, it's helping to tackle a species commonly known as greenhouse whitefly, a big threat to commercial crops worldwide. The little black insects have specialized in whiteflies. Next door, where they had a plentiful supply, the wasps have multiplied. They lay eggs and the living larva of greenhouse whitefly, which eventually kills them. Business is booming. The company sends insects to fight plant pests to customers across Europe. Transport has to be speedy since both insects and their eggs can perish along the way. Katz has also visited greenhouses in Ethiopia, where plant breeders work with beneficial bugs. But he says in conventional outdoor farming in Africa, it's not really advisable. In Europe, we have the advantage of having cold winters. In this period, the pest population is reduced to zero. But in tropical or subtropical regions, that's obviously not the case. Pest populations there persist throughout the year. It's very difficult to work with beneficial insects when pest infestation levels are high. And in my opinion, that can only work in isolated cases. So, preferably in controlled environments like greenhouses. Because beneficial insects have their limits, the company also works together with the chemicals industry. Katz is preparing predatory mite eggs for a manufacturer of conventional pesticides. The industry is working to develop substances that won't kill the little helpers. Peter Katz says that without artificial pesticides, food security isn't achievable. Instead, he wants to see chemical agents that have a lower impact on predators that can kill pests. Like these green lacewing larvae, which hoover up aphids in a big way, they're a real boon for any garden.